All right, really shouldn't do it, but another Warbles video. <laughs> the, the subject of, um, you know, photovoltaics and, um, you know, the practicality of putting them on cars. I just took one apart, a little, little, little uh, thing for the pool. You know, it fell in the water. I, I mean, it didn't, it was put in the water and it leaked, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'll have to take this apart. But, you know, it's got a little solar sail. Just a little one on there. Anyway, um, something to play with. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of good switches in it for a buck. I mean, damn. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So, here, here's the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Okay. And they say right here, for now, says N-R-E-L, uh, the better option is to forget about the rooftop panel and invest in stationary solar cells. Park the car and plug it in. Oh, while less imaginative and apparently too inconvenient, it avoids many of the problems that plague mobile arrays. You know, which then they just point out that the arrays are limited in size and they're not facing the sun and you're not getting the most out of them and they're kind of expensive and you should get the most out of them and blah 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 blah. Um, they also point out that, you know, they, they, these things are rated for, you know, 215 watts. It only delivers 165, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so, again, um, you know, it's a practical matter. I don't have the exact figures, but, you know, you can just run headlights, let's just say. You could, you could, you could have a solar panel all day, charge a battery, and then try to run headlights off that battery. And you're only going to get 10 minutes if you're lucky. If you're lucky you get 10 minutes. And so all of this hoof and rough and puff about um, 10 minutes of headlights. I mean, if it's that preposterously expensive, liters of gasoline are going to these things, then um, yeah, it should be policy. I mean, I see people now driving, they drive around in the morning and at night, you know, at dusk and dawn, um, and they got their headlights on. It's perfectly daylight out and you know obviously that should be against the law if it was wasting um, preposterous amounts of um, energy and it is wasting so yeah I mean I just don't understand I don't understand it to tell you the truth I just don't understand it <laughs> you know headlights on during the day just doesn't make much sense um, but clearly a car engine has waste in it and some of that waste can be put to some purposes that just don't matter because you have to maintain the idle in the engine uh, the point I've made, and um, so anyway, this, this is just saying exactly what I said, which is the stationary uh, solar cells would be a better idea. So anyway, um, Warbles keeps complaining, so now he's got two guys to agree with him. I don't think they really agree with him, they're just conceding, look, we're not calling you a liar, we're just saying something screwed up here. So, um, and, and this, these are the figures he gives, so, so he's claiming, you know, the best all these scientists can come up with is a one or two percent um, fuel efficiency. So you're talking about an extra, you know, on 100 miles, you get an extra two miles. Um, that's that, and that's optimum. That's the best performance these big scientists, these big brainiacs can come up with. And this guy is saying he's getting 40 percent increases. So his example figures here that he's supposed to, I'm supposed to be impressed with is uh, he's starting off with a, a 6.4 uh, kilometers per liter baseline. And then these numbers he's going to give us after this panel's installed are 12 miles to a gallon, 10 at least, I mean to a liter. So you're talking about a 40-50% increase in fuel economy because you put a 30-watt solar panel on a roof. And, and this isn't an extraordinary. This doesn't require something extraordinary in terms of evidence. And what do we get? What, what am I supposed to do with these figures? All right, I got numbers like this one. This one is just so funny that you're just like, what the hell is this? So they put a new, so he has no alternator. Alternator's dying, then disconnected. And his fuel economy was pretty much suck. <laughs> okay, so no alternator and it sucks. And you're saying, well, okay, he's got no alternator. There's no problem because if it was still, gen if it was still pulling juice, it would be creating heat or something. It has to create, it has to do something with the energy. So either the, the, the hood is starting to melt or something has to be happening to indicate some where this energy is going to. But then on top of that, what made things worse is they put a new alternator on in the sun foil and he gets 48 kilometers for 13 liters. All right, so that's like five kilometers per liter or something. I mean, it's just, it's insanely pitiful mileage. Um, 
and that's to recharge the battery. So that's his claim that the it took it took liters of gasoline to recharge the battery. Liters. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's obviously something wrong with these numbers. There's obviously something something isn't quite right because you don't get 48 kilometers for 13 liters. You just don't. I mean, it just doesn't happen. All right, then this other example here, he's got something down to Tamworth, and then the other one's up to Tamworth, right? So you got two, one, I guess it's going one place is up, it says, says 2,000 feet. Okay, so 2,000 feet up, and, and his numbers are essentially identical to the numbers for going down. So from Tamworth and to Tamworth are identical, and it's a 2,000 foot change in evolu elevation. I mean, you could only, I mean, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that going downhill should require a lot less gas than going uphill. And if you're going a net difference of 2,000 feet uphill, uh, that, yeah, your, your fuel economy should be lower than your fuel economy going down the hill. And so that doesn't make any sense. But I'm, I'm just saying, these, this is shit, okay, for, for what you're calling a proof. You, you can do a little better than this. You can have a standard trip. Do it four or five times with the panel on, with the panel off, with a charged battery. What's so difficult? So you, so you take two weeks out of your time to have a standard trip, 10 miles or whatever the hell it is. You travel it, um, and you monitor how much gas was used. I mean, damn it. It shouldn't be that complicated to provide some sort of evidence that's better than this slop. And, you know, I mean, then this is slop. I'm sorry, this is slop. I can't do anything with this crap. Um, it's not even in miles per gallon, which is really irritating because now I have to do all these damn kilometers to liters conversions, um, which is sort of a pain in the ass. But no, I mean, I granted the rest of the world isn't running on our um, yardstick, but um, so it's just not intuitive looking at it because I always have to recalculate what this number means. Uh, but anyway, this is just a silly argument. It's silly. And then in the context of his last video where he's talking about people getting what they deserve, like everybody's alive because God says they should be alive, and anybody who's dead is dead because God said they should be dead. <clears throat> like they did something to deserve it. Like somehow we get our just desserts in life. And in the very same video, he gripes that, well, I have to avoid stress because there's heart attacks in my genetics. Uh, does that make any sense? One minute you're saying genetics is going to kill you, and the next minute you're saying, no, what decides whether you live or die is whether you're an asshole or not. I mean, you know, so, so, so I mean, you know, it's bad enough that you're, you're arguing that you want to play scientist on the Internet. But then you're doing it in the context where you just ex expose yourself as an illogical fucknut. I mean, you just can't do that. You can't complain about your genetics and then in the same exact, you know, uh, video talk about how other people are alive because God must find something valuable in them. And of course the people who are dead are dead because God thought they were shitheads. And then talk about genetics. I mean it just doesn't make any fucking sense and your numbers on their face don't make any fucking sense. And so how do I separate those two subjects? The, the one subject you're obviously a fucknut on. There is no God, by the way. Um, no evidence for one. That we don't even have, we don't even have figures this fucked up to demonstrate a god. I mean, no one's even got nutty little, um, you know, crazy numbers to even indicate a god. Uh, so, so, I mean, it's, 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 this is just idiotic. And I have, to, and you're gonna, you're gonna argue with me, and then you're gonna. Well, anyway, the whole thing is just, it's just, you, you want to keep wearing your wackiness on your shoulder, as if that gives you immunity to the claim that you're a whack job. Well, it doesn't. I mean, it's very funny and huckleberry of you to, to talk about how you're a crazy huckleberry eating, you know, blueberries in the woods. Um, you know, and that sort of gives you immunity because now somebody can't just say, ah, crazy huckleberry in the woods, but because you've already admitted it, right? Um, but that only goes so far. That, that crap, that little folksy bullshit only lets you go so far. And when you're going to sit there and make scientific claims, you've got to do better than this. This is bullshit, fella. 
and I'm calling bullshit, and I have a right to call bullshit, and then and then you you know you you make all these hysterical videos, all this fucking ranting and raving about how I'm crazy and I've gone off the the, the deep end or something because I find it really irritating to have to argue your straw man, um, and and, uh, and then you and you call me coward and all this other stuff, and 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 uh, and here you are, you won't even you can't even watch the videos. You want me, I did do it, right? You said go back and look at your stupid videos. I did go back and I watched your stupid videos. All right, about seven of them. And there wasn't, they weren't chocked full of information. What they were is you showed us the notebook, but you didn't, you know, show us any grand figures here or grand totals or anything of, of substance. Um, you just got a bunch of anecdotal, it felt like I was going faster. Um, whatever, whatever to that crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so what else do I do, do I, you know, um, you know, back to the credibility thing. Um, yeah, and you won't, and then you won't even watch one of my videos, one of them. So, I mean, fuck that. And you keep complaining about how long video is, like that has something to do with something. Um, yeah, well, whatever. I, you know, there's arguments in videos, that's, that's how it works. So, anyway, I'm going to still argue that, um, Charging systems on cars are not as inef uh, are not as inefficient as you're making them out to be. Um, if all this was true, then all I have to do is I got I got some little you know you know eighth size car batteries on the porch. Um, so all I'd have to do is charge one of those babies up and put it in my car, and all of a sudden I'm I'm going to save fifty percent on my fuel because now I'm going to have a 30 watt producer of electricity and that 30 watts is somehow going to make my battery feel all good and happy and it's going to tell the alternator not to bother. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'll go back to my original point which was I think it's better. I think solar's you might as well use it, you know, where you can. And yeah, recharging a battery is a good idea. It's less work for the alternator, but in the end, if you're doing enough driving, it's not going to save you much, especially if you're driving every day, because just maintain the idle. You're going to you're, you're going to be able to generate enough electricity to maintain the battery's performance. So none of this makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. Um, so yeah, I, I just call bullshit. You got to do better than this. You're going to make a broad. You're going to make a bold claim that you're you are making the claim that you're smarter than all these scientists put together. That you figured out how this actually does work, in spite of the fact that none of them could make it work. You've made it work, and um, yeah, you got to back that up with something. And this, this isn't good enough. <laughs> this is not good enough. <clears throat> going uphill is the same amount of gas as going downhill. Yeah, that's not good enough. Alternators not on the car, not connected, and you get um, four times worse gas mileage. No, that's not good enough. Sorry. Not even close to good enough. So, until next time, and such. Uh, I'll throw this on the tail end of this video. I um, just don't want to re upload uh, you know, more videos to Warbles or about Warbles. Just kind of try to get this over with, and such. Um, so, sorry, yeah, my browser just crashed. So, let's load the old Warbles video. Um, so it's a response video to the Adam guy who made a video. Just Did I use ask him warbles to explain a couple of things about what's so bad about this idea or that idea. And uh, anyway, so um, you know, warbles just keeps defending this idea of calling it a putting a windmill on a car. So if you, so you talk about a turbocharger, it's a windmill on a car. It's just not a windmill on a car. It's just a silly way to describe it, and it's clearly his use of it was in a derogatory, mocking manner, so it's just, there, there's no doubt about what his point was. Um, it's like me saying, putting a LCD on top of your car, you know, to describe his, his airfoil or something. It's just a, it's a silly perversion of the truth, an unnecessary perversion of the literal truth. Um, and, uh, yeah, then it's used for, for rhetorical reasons, um, cheating reasons, <laughs> reasons to cheat the argument. And that's all it's for. So anyway, and so now, then he says, you know, he just keeps saying things like, um, he's, his way is the only way. 
He he knows what can and can't be done, and it's he's arrogant and obnoxious about all of it, and his evidence is shit. So um, this is just bullshit. So you know, even I, you know I the, my primary focus of my video was not using air um, drag as a way of gaining electricity, but I will defend that idea just because I still think there is a way to do it. And, and it's not that hard to do. Um, so anyway, there's all kinds of windmills, you know what I mean? They don't, not all propellers are, you know, some a turbine. You, you, need to, you, you can use different things to turn a, a turbine. And there's things called a squirrel cage that's a, another way to configure um, fans. And they use these on air conditioners a lot. You know, the squirrel cage type. These are quiet. They're not as efficient, but they don't need to be, uh, depending on the application. Um, so anyway, you could have one theoretically, two and a half feet long, th three inches, um, that's in the front grill of the car. And there's an air scoop, and so all you do is divert the air, one way or the other. So if you have the vents on for your car, it's vented, it just shoots right into the passenger compartment, or it shoots underneath the car, or if the car is getting hot, you can have it shoot to a radiator through ductwork, and if not, um, you have it shoot through this squirrel cage, okay, and the car's going 50 miles an hour, say, and you're using it as a brake, um, yeah, there's going to be pretty good pressure there. Stick your, your hand out the window when you're driving at 50 miles an hour and feel the amount of air pressure there is, um, wind pressure, if you want to call it that, um, but it's there, and it's there to be captured as drag. Um, and for him to say milliwatts, now it's going to be at least your 30 watts from your solar panel. I can at least compete with that. Um, so bullshit on you. Uh, yeah, so, so, but then that's one example. A little bit of creativity, you know, there are all kinds of ways to do these things. And so now his, his gripe is that they're all too expensive. And here's the guy saying it's too expensive from the perspective, like everybody's supposed to at home, you know, buy $50 worth of balsa wood. Um, you know, a hundred dollar panel, um, and they're not supposed to screw it up, right? They're supposed to be able to carve their wood and mount their glass panel and do all of the drill holes in the car and do all this crap without fucking it up. I mean, get real, Sparky. <laughs> Come on. Um, this isn't about whether we can do this as... as even even if we can do these, as, as do it the self add-ons. The, the argument, the point is, is it, um, are these things that maybe these innovations should be in cars now? Oh, fuck that phone! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! Evil damn bastard thing! <laughs> All right, let's get this over with. And to do that, you're looking at um, about 40 kilograms, I think, of drag. Right? So 80 pounds of drag from a one and a half meter diameter windmill. And somewhere you're going to have to have this thing on your car and either have the blades feathered or you know, have it jump up out of your bonnet or something. Basically, the only way to use the wind to break a car is to pop a parachute like a bloody jet fighter. Right, says you. So, I mean, that's why they have flaps on airplanes. It's because there's no way to control wind surfaces. Yeah, you flew airplanes, and I have to explain that one to you. Um, yeah, obviously, the only way to do it is if there's some some surface you can take advantage of. Now, obviously, airplanes have been streamlined you know, to, to have as little drag as possible, so there's not too many surfaces to take advantage of, but they do do that. The air intake on a jet fighter um, it can be reversed for, for braking. Um, stuff like that, anyway. So... But I'm, what's the point of arguing with you, okay? You're just such an obnoxious, arrogant motherfucker. No one else has an idea except you. You're stupid sunfoil. And you're stupid sunfoil to everybody else who uses it. Everybody else who tries it, it doesn't work. And somehow you have made it work through some sort of magic. Uh, yeah, you've, you've taken your 30-watt light bulb idea and, and somehow that idea, that bright 30-watt light bulb, is somehow saving 30%. Um, so if I actually put a 30-watt fluorescent light bulb in my car when I was driving, I would get 30% less fuel efficiency. I could actually waste gallons of gasoline by putting a 30-watt light bulb inside my car. That's the logic of what you're saying here. I mean, if the argument is 
do cars have broken alternators? Well, maybe they do, but that's a different subject than whether or not you're getting enough electricity from your photovoltaic to save 30% on your gas consumption. You know, when it's got to, too short of a runway. So to the point I'm making is that Gary's suggestions are wildly impractical, incredibly un... Yeah, so these are the kind of accusations I'm supposed to just accept and say, fine, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, no, you didn't even watch my fucking video. How the fuck can you arrogantly sit there and say my suggestions are wildly this or anything that when you admit you didn't watch the fucking video? I mean, just amazing, amazingly arrogant, obnoxious motherfucker. And then you're going to you're gonna claim a right to be sensitive because somebody else finds fault with your loopy idea? <laughs> you fucking... You would a hypocrite. Tested where they're not physically impossible. And who the hell's got the money? Yeah, whatever. Like I said, the standard for an idea is who the hell's got the money to, what, develop it? That's not the standard. And again, the, the main thrust of my idea was one where we find a mechanical process for regaining some of the energy from braking. And, um, you know, those can be a lot of different ways, from mechanical springs to flywheels to even regaining heat from the exhaust. I mean, that could be done by pressurizing fluids, right? Um, almost like an air conditioner. I mean, you could pressurize the fluid using heat, and that can create, um, you know, you can use that to, to, to run a little turbine or something. So there's, there's a lot to be recovered, and the point is, is whether you can create it, the mechanics to recover it efficiently. Yeah, but don't keep talking like your panel is all that damn efficient. Like I said, we've watched you take two weeks to get one on a roof. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's not exactly a do-it-yourselfer. Whereas Sunfoils, $150 for the panel, $65 for the wood, the paint, the glue, the screws. Yeah, 50 bucks for the regulator. Right, so you're at 200, over $200 right there, and then you're going to have the materials to glue the this or that, the other stuff, like I said. I mean, yeah, it's all adding up. Okay, and uh, my son saved an average of 15% on the highway and 38% in city driving. All right, so that's 15 to 40, so you're saying at least an average of 25%. So, you know, these, these numbers are, you know, Honda claims 2% as an outside possibility and you're claiming 20 percent and you don't think that's an extraordinary claim well i think it's an extraordinary fucking claim and your evidence has got to be a lot better so anyway fuck this asshole